uh, are you, at what point did you know you're on the Secret Service wanted list? Like at what point was oh, it when you're yeah. like, okay, oh my gosh, these guys are really after me. Oh yeah, I had, uh, I'd gone to, well when they came to get me, it was, I, it was a sheriff's deputy that came and told me, look, FBI's formed a task force. Well, there was a task force formed by the FDLE, Florida, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. They handed it to the FBI. There was already on, I'm already on probation, remember? I told you I got, I had lost the mortgage company, I started this huge scam, went for about a year and a half, two years, got $11.5 million, or borrowed $11.5 million, we're all making good money. But suddenly on like a Thursday, this, F, this uh, sheriff's deputy shows up and says, listen, I used to date this chick on the, uh, works for Tampa PD, he was with Hillsborough County, he said she came to me because I'd done a bunch of loans for him, came to him in the morning, early one morning, like six o'clock in the morning, and said, look, your buddy Matt Cox is gonna be arrested in the next few days, I worked on a task force, we just handed it over to the FBI, they're gonna arrest him in the next couple days. So he tells me that on a Thursday. So I have literally an hour left in the day and the whole next day to get out as much cash as I can because I'm thinking I'm leaving. I'm already on federal probation. The judge is not gonna be happy. So I'm definitely going to prison. I can't go to prison, look at me. I mean, I'm too cute to go to prison. This is not gonna work out well for me. So, I mean, I've seen Shawshank, I know what happened. So. I'm ready to take off. So I, <laughs> within, within, a, within a, a day or so, I get like 80 grand out in cash. This is the one you were talking about. Yeah. Right, so I go straight to, I've got this girl with me named uh, uh, Rebecca Halk. I'd been dating her a couple months. I barely know her. She desperately wants to come with me. She's in love, she's wonderful, everything's great. And she was, she had held it together pretty, pretty well for a couple months. And she knows what's going on. Oh, she knows 100% okay, what's going got on. It. And so we take off. I don't realize that she's bipolar. She's not taking her meds. She's within, right, we're not even out before we start, we're at each other's throat. She's nuts. So I get 80 grand out, we take off on the run. We go straight to Atlanta. We rent a house. I satisfy the loan on the house. I borrow about $400,000. I pull the cash out of the bank. It's funny because I was thinking a minute ago, um, I was thinking one of the stories I was going to say tell you was that uh, one time I had gone to ca- I was cashing checks for like eighty for like eight thousand nine thousand trying to stay under the ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and so at one point I get a check for like twenty nine grand and I think man this is ridiculous you know I'm sick of this we're going in here and here it's going to take another month, so I said I'm going to ca- start cashing larger checks and she's like that's don't ridi- don't do it and I said no it's okay I- I'm going to cash it so I go in I had stolen a guy's name by the name of Scott Cugno and I'd gotten an Alabama driver's license issued to him. So I have a real ID. I have a real social, a real ID. Everything's real. So I go in the bank, give him the cashier's check that had been issued by the title company when I refinanced the property. I had him issue the title, the checks into different guys' names. What, larger amounts, one of them was 29 grand. A lot, most of them were like eight or 9,000, one was 29. So I go in, I say, hey, my name's Scott Cugno. I need to cash this check. They go, well, that's odd. And I was like, well, okay. They said, why don't you put it in your bank? And I said, well, because my bank's in Florida and they're gonna hold it for who knows how long. This is 15 years ago. So they go, well, eh, that doesn't make sense. And I go, well, you know, this is a cash transaction bank. You can give me that. Yeah, we do large tra- Okay, let me, t- let me t- let's talk to the manager. Manager comes out, he says, okay. He says, what's going on? I said, look, I, I need to cash the check. And he goes, okay. So he takes the check and my ID and my credit card and he leaves. And I remember Becky, the girl I was on the run with, she calls me up, she's calling, what are you doing? I go, well, what's taking so long? Let the guy's being in a jerk, he's, he's waiting, he's doing verifications and stuff, I don't know. She's like, okay, well, I go, look, if the cops show up outside, call me. And so I hang up, we wait, we wait. Guy comes back and he goes, okay, Mr. Mr. Cugno, I have a question for you. He said, uh, how did you get the check issued to you? And I went, well, it, it was issued, a guy refinanced his house and he paid me the check. Okay, why? And I went, well, not that it, you know, it wasn't any of his business, but it wasn't a hard question. So I'm like, I'm trying to alleviate the, his anxiety. So I, I said, well, I'm, I'm adding an addition onto his house and this is part of the draw. And he goes like, that makes sense. It does make sense. And I was like, right. He goes, okay. He leaves five minutes later. She's still calling. What's going on? I don't know. He's, he's got my stuff. He's like, get out of there. No, I can't. He's got my stuff. I can't leave. Hang up. He comes back. He goes, um, what are you going to do with cash? And I go, are you serious? And he goes, well, I'm just, you know, it's, it's just, I feel apprehensive about this. And I went, uh, well, I'm going to cash a lot of the guys' checks. We give them checks and they don't have bank accounts because, you know, they, they just don't. They're laborers and we're going to cash some of their checks. 
And he goes, okay, that makes sense. Leaves, comes back. Finally comes back and I said, hey, what's going on? You know, and he says, listen, he said, uh, I just, we're just doing a series of checks on, to verify things. And I go, okay. And he says, uh, I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, well, we're trying to, he said, we, it turns out that this check was issued uh, by, on, a, on a house owned by a Michael Shanahan. And I was like, right, right. And he goes, he said, right, so we're just trying to verify uh, that Michael Shanahan issued the check, that's all. Well, there's a real Michael Shanahan. And I'm thinking, oh my God, huh. well, that's not good. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. So he leaves, Becky calls, what's going on? They're trying to call Michael Shanahan. She's like, get out of the bank. And I'm like, I can't, this guy's got my shit. I leave the bank for sure, they're calling the cops. I have to wait, hang up the phone. A minute later, my phone rings. I look at it, I don't recognize the number. I pick it up and I go, hello. And there's a woman like, hi, this is Kimberly from SunTrust Bank. Is this Michael Shanahan? And I'm like, yes, it is. And she goes, hi, uh, we have someone here at the bank trying to cash a cashier's check uh, that was drawn on your, your, on your, uh, from the title company. And I'm like, okay. And they said, uh, what was, do you, you know, who was the, how much was the amount for? I said, yeah, that was Scott Cugno. It was 30, about $29,000 even, I think. And she says, that's right. Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Shannon. I said, hey, how did you get my number? Because if you called information, you would have got his real number. And, and I go, how'd you get my number? Oh, we called the title company. They looked on the application that I had filled out and I'd used the cell number. And they said, we just got it off of there. I hope it's okay. No problem, no problem. Okay, thank you. Boom, hang up the phone. Five minutes later, still, the guy comes out with some woman, counts out the money to me, gives me the money. I stand up and he says, Mr. Cugno, I would like to um, say that I feel very uncomfortable about this transaction. And I said, well, what is it exactly? And he goes, you know, I can't put my finger on it. And I said, well, I'm, it'll come to you. <laughs> and I walk off. Listen, I was terrified, fucking terrified. I like to think that when the Secret Service showed up, you know, five, six days later, a week later, he realized I was the 